All right, everybody, I have something super exciting here, or at least for me, because I'm a dork and I like carburetors. But this is a prototype carburetor kit from KM Carburetor. And these kits are designed specifically for the CX500 because I noticed there was a lack of support within that segment. So the issue that we have been facing in the past is a lot of these kits are just simply poor quality and they the the pieces are wrong they don't have any kind of instructions or there's no clarity to them you have missing parts you have leftover parts things just fail and again the quality just isn't there so with that need within the cx community i knew that we needed something enter kurt of km carburetor so i was at barber vintage fest this past year and i was actually attending a carburetor seminar put on by him and jr luxick on some CBX carburetors. You guys know I have a project, one of those. And I wanna know how to do this stuff better. So they were specifically focusing on Kian or Kahin. I don't know how you say it right, I say Kian. But these uh, Kian CV carbs, because those same carb bodies are used on the CBXs and a lot of the dual overhead cam bikes that you see of the late 70s and in through the 80s. So Kurt and JR had developed some very high quality kits for the CBXs and I approached him, you know, bringing this to his attention. So we got together and co-developed a full-blown kit for your CX500. And these are the first three of the kind. I'm trying them out. I've already installed one kit on a bike back there that I really like. And I want to take you guys through the installation of all of these parts and kind of showcase some of the key features of them. But to start, everything if not most of everything is made in japan everything is of the highest quality you get the tools required to do the job correctly such as the actual pilot jet removal tool here and even vessel screwdriver bits so that's super awesome all of the rubber is viton so it's not going to get deteriorated from all the ethanol and the fuel nowadays so it's very high quality you have three options of zinc plating on the hardware which is included from you know yellow chromate to like bright chrome or even just the regular zinc coating that you would have for like a restoration as exactly as honda would have sold them and to go further the way these things are packaged is intended to be very user friendly or even beginner friendly everything is very clearly labeled very well packaged and quality is the top priority here so let's get started on these carbs this is for an 81 model cx and these have the accelerator pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on disassembling these things and as we put it together, I'll showcase a lot of the components here. And one, I'll show you how easy it is and two, I'll show you the quality that this is consisting of. Now moving over to the ultrasonic cleaner, this is a 30 liter unit that I have had since probably 2016. It cost me about 250 bucks at the time and it has worked very well the entire time. It paid for itself literally the first day. So I can't recommend enough getting a larger unit like this. 
I do have this same unit linked in my Amazon storefront in the description. But getting the largest one you can means that you can fit a ton of stuff in it beyond carburetors and you will find a ton of uses for it. But to actually do the cleaning today, we're going to be using an SC20 ultrasonic cleaning chemical. I get this through KM carburetor. It's a little bit pricey when you look at it at first, but the way the ratios break out, this will last forever. So it ends up being cheaper in the long run. It works really well. So I have made the switch to it. Super happy with it. But I'll have a link to that in the description. Okay, these CX500 carbs here are completely torn down and I have them all cleaned up and they are ready for assembly. But I wanted to showcase one item that comes with this kit and that is the press-in pilot jet removal tool here. So this is comprised of a teeny tiny little screw and a washer. Simple enough, right? Yes, works really well. Now I've seen and I have personally done other methods to get these Preston pilot jets out including drilling and tapping and although that does work you do run the risk of forcing some material into the jet and obviously into the passage below it so this is a very non-intrusive method and it works really well now this particular set of uh, cx500 carbs do not have the press in pilot jet but i've got these ones right here on the bench and these are for a gl500 so your results may vary. Some bikes have them, some bikes don't. So I'm going to showcase exactly how to use this real quick. It's very simple. So let me get the camera set up and we'll go. Now your pilot jet in question is going to be sitting underneath where your rubber passage plug would sit. So that would be removed from here. Now this is just a teeny tiny little screw as I've mentioned. We're going to put the washer on it. Feed it down here. Find your center, and then this is a two millimeter Allen wrench. Press down, start feeding this in. It will grab on its own. You can hear it starting to squeak. Okay. So a few turns is enough. Now another tool you should have is probably like a trim removal tool, something with a little gap in here. So get it set up under the washer. Get a nice pry. And there it is. Now to remove the tool, all you gotta do is just kinda get these just gently set up in some pliers. Get your Allen wrench. And get it out. Super easy. So this does ultimately put a couple threads in the end of the jet, but it's very safe and you're not creating any shavings or anything like that. And then from there you can go ahead and actually clean your jet. So I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, we got a jet here and this has a very, very small orifice in it. 
So what I normally do is I'll keep a length of wire, I'll strip back quite a bit of it, and then I'll just work on getting that wire fed down through the hole in the jet. It might take a few tries. Yep, there we go. And you can see through it now. Now another method that you can use for cleaning brass that let's say has a bunch of varnish in it, a good first step to kind of get it cleared out would be to actually get it held, you know, held in a set of pliers here, and get a torch. And whenever you apply heat to these things, it'll actually melt and force that varnish out. Now there's not really any in this right now, so it's not going to make a difference. But I've taken some really nasty jets, put some heat on them like that, and it just forces a lot of that out, and it works really good. And then from there, you can continue to clean them with like a you know a brass brass brush, or if you want to put them in a uh, maybe like a uh, a clock cleaning chemical or something like that. So there's various ways that you can brighten up brass and clean it. So that's up to you to uh, kind of look up various methods there. But of course, once you get this thing out, you also want to make sure that you clear out these passages and you're putting compressed air through everywhere and making sure everything flows, chasing it with car cleaner, that kind of thing. So it's very important that you get that jet out and get that passage cleared. So I'm going to start off with doing the air cutoff valves here because to assemble the carbs, we need to have these plates on just for access. So, so in the kit, we have the air cutoff valves here and the version of the spring will change depending on what carb you have. And then of course there is a corresponding bag with the necessary hardware. So one thing I've been doing, taking my old parts, putting them in the new bags, that way I'm eliminating something on the table here. Now before we go any further, I wanted to talk about one thing that these kits include and that is the, and that's the choke and throttle plate hardware. And I'm choosing not to actually remove the uh, choke butterflies or the throttle blades here. Now the hardware in here is actually staked, so the back side of the screw is flared out in order for it to not back out. Now on some other carbs, like let's say a rack of CP750 carbs where there are four of them, you actually have to remove the choke blades to fully disassemble the entire bank. Now a CX500, for example, you don't have to do that. So these are in good shape and I feel like most of the time if they're in good shape I just I don't want to remove them I don't want to touch them there's little felt seals in here I, I would just rather not risk any further damage with them so I just wanted to point out that the kit does include the hardware for that 
And if you are to remove those, you know, you have to be really careful to kind of get these things out. And then of course, getting them lined back up, you want to make sure you apply red Loctite to those little screws to keep them from backing out. Because as you can imagine, if those screws come out, that's going straight into your engine. That's not good. Take a look at my CVX rebuild if you guys want to see where those screws end up. So continuing on though, I'm going to actually work on getting these carbs assembled together. So I'll be working on the fuel transfer tube as well as the accelerator pump transfer tube. Now the 79 carbs, they do not have an accelerator pump. That's easily identifiable by the bottom of the left bowl here. It has that section. That's your accelerator pump. Now the way the accelerator pump works is whenever you first initiate throttle, your actual motion here is translated into a little tiny tab right there that pushes this plunger down, forces fuel through a tube, and then there's a tiny little nozzle right back there that forces fuel that way. This is just a quick hit of fuel. So if your carb does not have either the secondary transfer tube or the visible accelerator pump on the bowl, you know you don't have it. So for this, we're using all new Viton O-rings for both. We'll get them fitted on here and then start working on getting these together. I'm just putting these in here loose for right now. I'm gonna bring these up a little bit tighter now. So after you tighten those brackets down, you want to make sure that you test everything. Smooth operation. So we're good.
All right, so we're about to put the float bowls back on. And for that, of course, we have Viton float bowl gaskets. We have new hardware for the float bowls as well as the air jet covers. And those are actually on the top side. Those are those little kidney-shaped plastic covers. We'll do those here in a minute. And then, of course, we have our accelerator pump. Now, this little guy includes a couple things here. There's that really tiny o-ring that is going to sit right here on your actual float bowl and then this is just a nice little cover that will sit in this section down here and then all of that will go together so we have to first dig out a couple pieces here so our little o-ring Okay, now this one's a little tricky. You want to make sure you don't lose it. It's very easy for it to fall out. Now before we put the bowls on, I just wanted to reiterate the fact that I did not put any new brass in this. Of course, the kit did not come with any brass, and that's okay because I've never used any brass in any previous kit because a lot of times you'll find yourself chasing your tail over, you know, manufacturing quality or just, you know, knockoff parts, things that are wrong, you can't get it dialed in, and, and I know you guys have all fought it. I see the posts on the Facebook pages all the time, but you guys buy these really cheap kits and then you don't know why your bike doesn't run right or why the jets are wrong or why this part isn't for it. And it's just, you're gonna spend more time and money trying to fix those low quality kits than you would if you just spent the money on a good high quality setup like this. So again, there are various ways of cleaning brass, cleaning jets, cleaning moles and tubes, things like that. So don't be too intimidated by it. This is just something normal that you do and uh, there's plenty of information out there as far as how to do it but I'm gonna go ahead and get these bowls on and then we'll move topside on these. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Now I find it's a little bit easier to stand these things up. Okay. 
get the bowl in place, flip it over, and then get your screws started. That's just my method. You gotta flip it the right way, just so you know. And here we've got a few bits of hardware for the accelerator pump cover. So it's this guy right here. So while I'm distracted making videos, I noticed I did forget the spring. I've actually got messages before from people for like, hey, I found this spring after I rebuilt my carbs. I don't know what it goes to. It goes right here in between the throttle shafts. So it's not bad. You, all you gotta do is just compress it. And it fits in there, no problem. Just to kind of keep vibration away, you know. Keeps tension on stuff. Okay, give these a little rotate. We got our new float bowl screws with O rings. Now, these guys are a little tight on here. Just be careful. Right. These things are looking really good. Again, we have smooth actuation of everything. So we'll go ahead and put our accelerator pump on and then we can move top side. All right, that is done. Moving top side. Now on your slides, you have a little plastic cap for your needle. And on there, got a teeny tiny little O-ring, even including those. Why not? Set that guy right there. These are a little tricky to remove. Old ones in the bag.
So the throttle cables back here are notoriously difficult to kind of get onto the bike. So a quick trick for you is to actually just remove the right side vacuum cover. which gives you a lot more access to the actual cables and whatnot back here. We'll leave that loose for now. Go ahead and get our pull cable on. Work from the other side here. This is the part where it becomes easier by taking off the cover. Is accessing these nuts. These nuts? Ha! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> and I'm actually getting ready to make a tool to actually access that synchronizing nut right there from this side because it's just such a pain in the butt. So, we've got two CX500s to synchronize today. Now I'm going to go ahead and fight these things. It's a little tricky, so I'm probably not going to record this, but you know what to do. All right, we got the red one up and running, bringing it up to temp right now, so we're almost there. So this thing actually hasn't ran since October, and it's currently like late March. But this is such a good little bike. I know it's gonna need a sink and stuff, but it uh, doesn't feel like it's too far off. So we've already got this one done have it synced it's running great so once I get the seat back it is ready to go back to the customer all right I just hooked up the lines not too bad there we go pretty close but we'll make it pretty closer now on the topic of syncing the carbs I just made two tools because I'm tired of messing with CX500s. So this is an eight millimeter. I bent it, so I heated it up right there, bent it, and then I just welded on another handle here. So this fits like so. So you can see the tool here. And of course you have your handle. And then you put the screwdriver in over top. It's still a pain in the butt. I typically prefer to have like a socket, so I tried making one with this. Yeah, it's not as good. I can't quite get a screwdriver in the end at the right position. So, you know, we tried, but I'm sure I can use this on another bike. 